Hi right, guys, we're going to have a quick discussion on center of gravity, center of mass, and centroid. Okay, just waiting for the camera to focus there. Um, this chapter 9 of the Hibbler textbook doesn't really give us any kind of intuitive feel for what is the center of gravity, or mass, or the centroid. So this is just a quick um, introduction to what it is. I found... Um, I found some quotes on the internet or some, some descriptions. The center of gravity, this is, this is so interesting. The center of gravity of a body is defined as the point. Okay, take note. The point. A point. The point. So we have a body. Okay. We have a three-dimensional body. But that body has a point somewhere on it. There's a point. Amazing, isn't it? through which the whole weight, the whole weight of the body acts. So this whole body has a total weight or a total mass or a total area or volume, whatever you want, okay? Total weight. Okay, so there's a point on the body through which the whole weight of the body acts, okay? Okay. And that is called your center of gravity or center of mass. Okay? And we'll get to the centroid, which is referring to the area and volume just in a minute. Okay? Um, yeah. So, so that, is, that is quite amazing. So I use this example in class. If you take, say, a ruler and it's got a constant density or constant mass, we, we know intuitively that that if I put my finger there, right, and I apply a force upwards, then the ruler will balance. And why will it balance? It's because this is a point on this body through which the whole weight acts. Okay, so um, maybe I can just quickly redraw it. This, this whole body has a total weight, okay, but the total weight, even though there's a distributed weight, the weight is distributed, it acts through the geometric center. So in real life, that is where it, all its weight is effectively acting. This is a most mysterious and amazing phenomenon, but that's what's happening. So it's got weight distributed, of course, right? The, the mass is constant, the density, the weight is constant throughout. But, but it is as if all the weight is acting at a point. Okay, so I want to remind you. There's a point on the body through which the whole weight of the body is acting. Okay, so there's a whole body, there's a point. Okay, here's a body, here's a ruler, and there's a point. So if I want to counteract this ruler so that it doesn't, no rotation or translation, right? No rotation, no translation. I need to apply a force exactly opposing that point, which in a, in a uniform ruler will be right at the center. Of course, now, if we took a ruler and as we move from left to right, the density changed, we effectively the mass changed, and say, say there was more mass located this side, then of course, the, the center of mass and the center of gravity would change to, say, that point. So I would need to counteract that ruler at that point, okay? Then, if I counteracted it at that point, again, it would be in rotational and translational equilibrium. The minute that I move that my, the applied force slightly to the side, we will have rotation, okay? Um, so another example, say now I take that ruler and I and we know where the center of gravity is, okay? But I put it on a table. Say I put it on a table. Say there's a table there. Then obviously its center of gravity is being supported, right? It's being supported there. So we will have no rotation or translation. If I move this table to there, right? So that the table is over there. Then, there, as you can see, there will be a small gap 
between the applied uh, weight, the effective point on the body where the weight is acting, and and a a resistance force, right? A normal force. And so you the this ruler will begin to tip. Okay? So whenever we're studying these problems, we have to realize that there is a point on a body where it is as if all the weight is acting or all the mass is concentrated okay or all the area is concentrated lumped okay okay so just just quickly center of gravity right refers to this weight but the center of gravity is only valid obviously if there is a gravitational field okay gravitational field so if there's no gravitational field you can't speak about the center of gravity but the center of mass is independent of a gravitational field okay so but the center of mass generally equals the center of gra- the center of gravity if the gravitational field is uniform okay so center of mass center of gravity that's why often people uh, interchange them they speak about center of gravity center of mass because it is assumed that the body is inside a gravitational field okay but the center of mass is in the, is essentially independent of a gravitational field the center of mass will be the same wherever you are okay but the center of gravity is dependent on on the gravitational field if the gravitational field is constant the center of mass equals the center of gravity okay now the next thing quickly is the centroid the centroid is just when the centroid is just the center of geometry okay and that is essentially volume area line okay so what do you notice uh, center of geometry means there's no density there's no mass involved there's no gravity we are just purely looking at the shape of the object okay and um what is this description it's it's a point again guys there's a point remember center of gravity there's a point centroid there's a point at which the total area of a plane figure okay such as a rectangle triangle square is assumed to be concentrated there's a point okay again say now i've got this say the square there's a point on the square where the total area the total area is assumed to be concentrated right so center of gravity there's a point center of mass there's a point centroid right there's a point where the total area is assumed to be concentrated okay um wikipedia says the centroid or geometric center of a plane figure a plane that's right what's a plane it's just a two dimensional um area is the arithmetic mean it's the average position of all the points in the shape okay okay and then i like this because this is what we need before we get into details i like this informally it is the point at which a cut out of the shape could be perfectly balanced at, on the tip of a pin okay so informally informally the centroid informally the centroid is a point at which the shape could be perfectly balanced so if i take that shape and i put my finger under that point then this area will be perfectly balanced okay so i hope you're getting like a conceptual understanding so when you come to me guys and you say sir where is the centroid oh dear the power just went off let me just pause the video and i'll come back when it comes back on Okay, power's back. So so when you're looking at a, a triangle like this for example, you know, some of you would say so is the 1/3 for the for the geometric center is it this side? Is it from that side or is it from that side? Well, just ask yourself the question. 
if I if I put the, that point, that point that we're talking about there, and I try to balance my balance that triangle by putting my finger underneath there, will it balance there if it's one third from that side? Or will it balance if it's one third from that side? Just use your logic. Then obviously, guys, it's going to balance one third from that side. Okay? So, okay, so I hope you've got this basic idea of, of what this... Um, what this means, center of gravity, centroid. It's effectively where everything is acting. It's the point where everything is acting. So if you have, for example, if you've got this structure like this, I don't know what it is. Let's make one up. And it's kind of leaning over. If your center of mass is to the side, is to the left of that point, then it's being supported. Can you see that? It's being supported. If the center of mass shifts to anywhere on that side then there's no there's nothing supporting that line there okay then this thing will begin to tip so perhaps you can you could try to consider things in, in this kind of way um, just one last thing quickly before I stop um, I have discussed this in class but obviously not with everyone but here's a here's a problem 524 here's an example in, in chapter 5 and, and previous examples, you were given, say, this kind of complicated structure, and all you, were, all you were given is this G, this value G. And you're saying G1 and G2 um, are the center of gravities. But you perhaps you didn't really understand what it means. Well, this G is a point on the structure where it is as if the whole weight is acting at that point. Okay. So when you were trying to solve then for this um, chapter 5 problem, e the equilibrium problem, you wouldn't be so concerned with all the details like these two blocks, this beam, this vertical beam, etc. You would say, I don't care what this thing look like, looks like. I know that this structure has an effective point where all its weight is acting, and it's that point. So when I, so when I try to solve that problem, Right, there's that whole thing and there's this thing and that thing. I don't care about all this detail. I just I know that that's where all the weight is acting. If I know what the total weight is of that structure, I know that the total weight is acting at that point. So all I then do is I just use my normal equilibrium equations and I solve for whatever I need to solve. So in chapter 5, you were given this, th these points, the, the center of gravity. In chapter 9, we calculate that point using all these members, etc. Okay? So I hope that was helpful. Cheers.